Women Warriors is a series that investigates the lives of women who forge their own destinies. What's up Warriors? Welcome to the channel. I hope you're enjoying what we do here and if you are, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Today is the first of our Women Warriors series and we have so many stories to tell and we cannot wait to share them with you guys. But today we are visiting Japan, where the story of our warrior Takeko Nakano takes place. Once upon a time there lived a fierce samurai, and her name was Takeko Nakano. She was born in Aizu, Japan in 1847, with fire in her heart and determination in her soul. As a child, Takeko trained in martial arts, dreaming that one day she would become a samurai. But every day she was told that she would never be able to reach her dream because she was a girl. But Takeko was determined to prove them wrong. Inspired by the tales of female samurais before her, Tomoe Gozen, Hojo Masako and Hangazu Gozen, she would become a samurai. She just knew it. She had a will as strong as steel and she knew she had what it took to defy tradition and follow in the footsteps of her heroes. So she trained every day excelling under the tutorage of the famed instructor, Danzuke. Over the years, she became incredibly skilled with the naginata, which was a traditional Japanese pole arm made from hard Japanese oak and razor sharp folded steel. But no matter how skilled she became, she was still frowned upon and dismissed. Until 1868, when Dekeko was 21 years old, a civil war hit Japan. For years, Western leaders had put pressure on Japan to open their borders to trade. Many in Japan believed that they would have to modernise in order to defend themselves from the West, as gunboat diplomacy increasingly forced Japan to agree to these unequal treaties. And as such, a rift formed between the Emperor's Imperial Court and the Shoguns. This was known as the Boshin War, and Japan was torn apart. War ripped through the country so savagely that even after the surrender of the shogunate in 1868, his supporters fought on for another year, with regions falling one after another to the imperial army. One of the last to fall was Takeko's hometown of Aizu. Takeko knew that this was her moment. She was ready to fulfil her dream and join the Aizu army. But despite her skill and willingness to fight, she was refused because of her gender. But that wasn't going to stop her. Instead, Takeko with her mother and 16-year-old sister gathered a group of Aizu women, all trained in martial arts, and led them to the front line, despite the orders to stay home. This group of fearsome women would later become known as the Joshi Tai, the women's army. Having heard that the enemy was raping the women from captured cities and selling them into slavery, Takeko and the Joshi Tai pledged that they would not fall victim to their enemies. So they pushed on, meeting up with the Aizu Cannon Brigade, the army that Takeko had dreamed of being a part of. At first, the leader was unwilling to let them join his forces, but on rejection, the women knelt together and drew their blades, stating that if they were not allowed to defend their home, that they would take their own lives there and then. Takeko would not take no for an answer. Not this time. The army soon relented and granted the Joshi Tai permission to join them on the battlefield. Takeko was named leader of the Joshi Tai by the Aizu commander and was commanded to attack the Imperials at Yanagi Bridge. This bridge was known as the Bridge of Tears, as many beheadings were carried out there. Takeko knew that this could be a suicide mission. As the sun rose in the sky, so did the Joshi Tai. The Battle of Aizu had arrived. Takeko led the women's army in a charge against the Imperial's firearm battalion. Their opponents were so taken back by the presence of women that they lowered their weapons, giving the Joshi Tai a moment's advantage. Takeko fought like a demon, and witnesses say that she single-handedly killed half a dozen soldiers. But even the strongest of warriors cannot fight forever. Despite their unbreakable will, the Joshi Tai were outnumbered and outgunned. Takeko took a fatal shot to the chest, falling to the floor as her world spun around her. Yuko, her younger sister, rushed over to her side. Knowing that she would not recover, Takeko expressed her dying wish. Don't let me become a trophy. 
cut off my head. And despite her infant years, her sister did as she was asked, beheading her beloved sister with her naganatha. The battle went on for another week, but in the end, Aizu fell. The rebellion collapsed, and with it entered the era of the samurai. But not all is doom and gloom. Yuko survived the battle and escaped to a nearby temple with Takeko's head, burying it under a pine tree where it remains to this day. The temple is named Hokai Temple, found in modern day Aizubange. It remains a tribute to those who refused to go quietly. Years later, a monument was erected in her honour at the Hokai Temple, and she is celebrated at the annual Aizu Autumn Festival. Every year, young girls take part in a march in memory of Takeko and her army. She remains one of the most courageous figures in Japanese history. Her fighting spirit lives on and remains an inspiration to many Japanese women. The moral of the story is fight for what you believe in and don't let anyone ever tell you that you're not a mighty warrior. Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed researching and learning about this incredible young woman. And if you did, then please remember to support us by giving us a like and hitting that subscribe button. And if you guys know of any incredible warrior women or stories that you would like us to share, then please let us know in the comments. We have plenty coming your way, guys. So stay tuned and I'll catch you again soon, warriors.